looks like we're all up and running. Uh, just a quick free stream today. Well, I say quick, we'll see how long it is. I don't know yet. I'm working on a painting, a little 7x5, that I started yesterday, of this little yellow apple. It is actually an apple, and it comes from uh, a traditional orchard farm in Gloucestershire just down the road from me, uh, where they grow, um, I think like about a hundred different varieties of apples. They're nothing like supermarket apples. And that one I took straight from the tree. So, you know, it still has the branch. It's attached to the branch and has the leaves on it. Let me switch over to the main camera so you can see it a little bit better. But um, by the way, I'm not sure. The stream seems to be working okay. I've had a couple of problems with um, the speed of the stream lately. But if you're watching, please pop a little message in the chat to let me know if you can see me and if you can hear me okay. Seems to be uh, working from my point of view, I think. So if I switch over to... Well, I can show you this. So this is the little painting I'm working on at the moment. Um, seven by five panel. Um, you can see the photo just to the right. Uh, <clears throat> mostly working from, hello, Carleen, really nice to see you. I hope you're okay. Mostly um, working from the photo, but I've got the apple as well for reference. Um, and I've cropped it quite down from what the original was, you can probably see. Um, you don't really need to be looking at me, do you? Let's put, bring the palette up. Although there isn't actually anything to see on the palette yet because I haven't put any paints out. So let's get on with that. But the nice thing about that is I can tell you what colours I'm putting out as I go. So obviously we're going to need white. And this is titanium white. It's Michael Harding titanium white number one, which I think is in safflower oil. Yeah, titanium white in safflower oil. Now this is Michael Harding Bright Yellow Lake, an Arilide Yellow. If you've seen me stream before, you'll be used to seeing this on my palette. I tend not to put out cadmiums these days because unless I want a really high chroma in an orange yellow, I don't really need it. Um, or if I want something more opaque because this is quite a transparent yellow. What else are we gonna have? That's gonna be too green by itself. Uh, Pamela, yes, this will be um, this will be available later. Basically, if you go to my YouTube profile, Yellow Ochre, the reason this is here is because this is too green and I'm going to want to send it a little bit more orange. Um, yeah, if you go to my YouTube profile and you click the more link at the top and then a drop down, it's the same for everybody's profile. And then there'll be a, a little menu item there called videos and all the live streams I've ever done on YouTube are there. So this one will be there too. Hello, Laura, nice to see you. I will, um, I'm afraid I'm a little bit behind on my friend requests on Facebook. <laughs> I've got a bit of, um, well, it's not, it's not horrendous, but I feel like I'm doing an awful lot of teaching at the moment and uh, seems to be taking up a lot of time. And I, it means I have a little bit less time for stuff like this. Um, but being busy is a nice problem to have. So this is quinacridone rose. Now, I tend not to use cad reds or orange reds like naphthol much these days unless I want a high chrome orange red because this is more flexible because I can mix it with the yellow for if I need any oranges that high chrome which I won't I don't think today anyway what we're going to put out next um, where's my green gold Michael Harding green gold now this is here for the shadow side of the apple I think I'm going to the apple kind of looks fairly finished, but I think I'm going to work on it a little bit more today. I just want to 
I want to bring out the tension a little bit in this between the unresolved areas where it kind of is disappearing into nothing and to resolve the apple a little bit more. Um, so transparent red oxide. Now the reason I have the green gold and the transparent red oxide is because one is obviously very green and one is very orange. And if I mix them together, I get something in, in the middle, which is about the right color for this shadow. I think my shadow side of my apple might want to be a bit darker than that. <laughs> Hello, Marion. And this is raw umber, which like, you know, you can't paint without raw umber. You just can't. I won't hear it. It's impossible. Maybe I should revise that. I can't paint without raw umber. And Sin of Sins, Ivory Black. And I'm gonna, I use that for the greens, greens of the leaves. And I'm also gonna put out a little bit of thallo green. Not too many colors on the palette, you know. I need to decide what to do around here because I want this red leaf, but I don't really want it sticking off the side or maybe it's gonna go over here or I'm not sure. I to do a bit of thinking about what's gonna happen there or just try some stuff and see what works. Now this is all, uh, it's wet still. And all of this, actually the shadow side of the apple is dry. But this side is wet still. Back here, I'm not going to touch because it's slightly... Well, that's fairly dry, actually. I could possibly get away with working over that a little bit. But I probably won't. And I might finish this today or I might, you know... Only get a little way along with it. Not sure, we'll have to see. I'm going to get, um, this is linseed oil. I'm going to rub a little bit of linseed oil, just a tiny bit, into the shadow side here, because I'm going to want to work on this and I don't want to work on dry paint. So this was painted into a couch yesterday, or a couche, a layer of, um, oh, picked up some yellow. Uh, a layer of, I use linseed oil and um, terps. And most of this is dry because I used more terps than linseed oil yesterday. But where the paint is thick and there's titanumite in it, obviously it's still wet. Everybody needs a palette knife, right? So I'm really just trying to think about, hello, Candy. Hello, Carmen. <laughs> it's nice to see you too, Georgia. Yeah, this, it has a lot of, this is actually a subject that I was teaching last night <clears throat> on the Autumn Colors workshop. And this particular one has been chosen and is being taught. This isn't the painting that I was doing then, it was slightly different, but I was teaching form as well but particularly uh, putting emphasis on more gestural painting simplified gestural painting for the leaves you know when they go back into shadow where am I going to start today let me show you something about the, um, the shadow colors I was talking about so if I get this is the green gold right and this is the transparent red oxide I mix a bit of the transparent red oxide into the green gold, I get this beautiful, it goes slightly more orange and I can make it go as orange as I like, but you can see possibly on the palette that's very transparent. <clears throat> and a bit of raw umber in there will knock the chroma down a little bit and it will also make it more opaque. Bring the value down a little bit. Shadow.
shadow side. Let's just see, put a little bit of that on and see how it looks. So this is a Rosemary's Eclipse Angled Brush. I just dipped it in a little bit of oil because I don't like to go straight in with a, a brush that has no, uh, you know, a dry brush. So I'm just thinking about the values and I wonder if I could be bringing it, this would be too dark. I wonder if I could be bringing it down there. <laughs> Louis, that's so nice of you to say. But because I've got the... This little layer of linseed oil on there, I can kind of... I can be quite careful about how much of this I put down. I just fancied that this would benefit from being a little bit lower in value, a little bit darker. And because I'm painting into the couch, I kind of have a nice... Um, it's like working wet into wet. It is working wet into wet. This area around here I want to resolve. But I just want to sort out a couple of things first. Let's get... Uh, No, don't want that. I want a colour for the reflected light, but I don't want it to be too... I don't want it to be too light. But I do want it to be more, slightly more orange. So it's slightly, it's just slightly lighter than that first value that I put down. And then I want the color to go between the light and the shadow. So this is, this is the Aralide yellow with some yellow ochre. Too much yellow ochre. bit too orange so I'm bringing in a bit of this green gold to push it away from the orange a little thank you Lisa what a lovely thing to say oh you're doing yesterday's session today Marianne yeah it was a fun session um, I'm still thinking about the other the, the one that I did yesterday and whether to to carry on working on it actually and, and bring it to more of a finish this one I, I did before the session, this version of it. Where's the other one? I've got the other one around here somewhere. It's bigger, it's an eight by 10. And I just got a fingerprint on it. But this is the one that I painted in the session yesterday. You can't see the whole thing because the camera is zoomed in, but. This, I thought this was, this would be nice to try one with like a kind of a closer crop in on the subject. It changes, you know, a little bit how it feels. Actually, no. More orange. So for a second session, really, I'm just looking for what I can do at the moment. I just want to bring out the form of this apple a little bit more. I'm 
and especially this area like I say I want to kind of try to resolve this area a bit I'm coming up I'm, as I'm mixing I'm coming up from dark to light I'm coming up towards the light now I don't need to do very much because this is all still wet so I'm painting into what's already there uh, hopefully reasonably subtly Oh, the yellow, this yellow is Michael Harding um, Bright Yellow Lake. It's an aralide yellow, like a Hansa yellow, but it's it's lighter, higher value, and um, a little bit more green yellow even than Hansa yellow is. Hansa yellow is, I don't know, it, it varies actually. Jeff was saying the other day, that some people sell Hansa yellow as PY3, but this is PY74, so this is, um, let me show you this full screen actually, because it's interesting. This is PY74, this is Michael Harding yellow, like most people's Hansa yellows, I think are PY74. And this is PY3, you can see hopefully, but it's slightly more green. And if you put that against, um, where's my cad yellow? And there's cad yellow. So from, from left to right, left is more green and then you get more orange with the cad yellow. Yeah. So the reason this hasn't been used much is that I found that if I wanted this particular color, then I could just mix between these two and I could get there. So I don't really need it. Not to say I'll never use it, but. So I find that Aralide yellow, although it's transparent, which can be a bit frustrating sometimes, I find it more um, flexible because I can get green yellows and orange yellows with it. You know, if I want to get something that's closer to a, a cadmium, then I can just bring in a little bit of this quinacridone rose and it will send it a little bit more orange. Um, for the light side, general color for the light, I want it to be, so I'll bring in, I'm bringing in some yellow ochre in it because I want it to be a bit more orange and slightly lower chroma. bit of white to bring the value back up because it's not I don't want it full on that yellow that full on would be a little bit too much and then some parts of it will want to be lighter so let's have an even lighter version just with a bit of white Mm, lost too much chroma. So if I want this a yellow with slightly more orange but higher chroma, I'm going to just take it a bit more orange with the chronacridone because it's it's chronacridone rose. This is because it's higher chroma than the yellow ochre, and then I'll bring in the white, and it'll help me keep a bit more chroma as I go up the value range. It's a problem as you go up the value range in paint. I mean, yellows, you can get high chroma quite high up. But still, by the time you get to the top of the value range, you're running out of chroma. Hello, Elaine. Thank you. I should probably do something with my drawings a little bit dodgy in places as well, I think. So this is another Rosemary's Eclipse, but it's a smaller one. This is like a quarter inch. So I'm kind of working a bit more into the detail. I want a bit more chrome around here.
So mostly I'm trying to model the forms within the forms, you know, the small forms. Most of the, the, the large forms I'm fairly happy with. So I just want to bring in a little bit more detail and a bit more modelling of the small forms today, really. And I'll just, I guess I'll just paint until I feel like it's somewhere where I would want it to be. And hopefully have the wisdom to stop when I've reached that point. <laughs> So mostly while I'm painting, I'm mostly thinking about like a particular area and, you know, what do I want in terms of the chroma and what's the value going to be there? I'm bringing in a bit too much, a bit too orange on the reflected light. And this, the transition around here, like where it's between the shadow and this leaf, I want something there to help that transition happen because it's, uh, I don't feel like it's working too well there at the moment. Um, when I say I want something there, I mean a lower chroma, uh, sorry, lower value, something in between to help bring it back to show that it's turning away. to the shadow. I need to kind of be careful that I don't, I don't overdo it though. I'm ignoring, there's that little dark patch, I'm pretty much ignoring that. Little dark patch on the apple around here, which I'm, I'm not going to put in. Uh, mostly because I, th I don't think it's going to help the form much. Hello, Sabah. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Gone a bit too orange around here, I think. I'm gonna knock that back a bit more green again. And for the light side, I, I, uh, for something like this, I'll generally use like um, a hog fill that has just a bit more texture to it. I prefer the texture of these brushes. Where I want lumpiness and texture, you know. In the shadow, I want smoothness and, uh, and not much detail, so I tend to go in there with a soft synthetic.
Christopher, yeah, the extras, yeah. Yeah, because you were in the session yesterday, of course, so most of the people here won't have been. Um, but yes, it was, was doing, it was a different version though. This this one's cropped smaller, Peter. This is the one I, uh, Christopher, sorry. This is the one I started in the afternoon yesterday before we had the session. So it's a seven by five. There's less in it. Um, I just fancy trying like a, different crop. But this will probably interest you today, uh, Christopher, because I'm mostly modeling the small forms and um, Trying to resolve the form a little bit, a little bit more in places. And bringing in like some smaller nuances of colour, I suppose, as well. Finer nuances of colour here and there. Thank you, Judy. Uh, yes, I'm on Instagram, uh, Savra, although I don't do very much with it, I must admit. I, I keep meaning to be more more diligent with my Instagram. I just, um, it's something I really want to do. I just never seem to connect with it that well. I even took a course recently on, on how to use it well. Uh, I say recently, it was probably about six months ago now, by Dina Brodsky, who's brilliant. Dina Brodsky, sorry. Brilliant course. But, um, you know, I struggle to get to a point where I'm actually putting any of it into practice. 
and I think I've come to the conclusion that, that the main reason is because I don't like phones. <laughs> Which is pretty ironic for someone who uses as much tech as I do. But um, I just don't get on with phones much. And Instagram is, is obviously is completely designed to be used on a phone, so... Oh, we have an expert in the house. So I'm just trying to help this edge here turn away a little bit from the light and the shadow. Thank you, Alex. It's very nice of you to say. Might not actually do much more on the apple. Just soften a couple of bits here and there. And this is a little, just, it's a lot of it is the edges, a lot of how you model form is with the edges. If the values are good and the color is okay, um, a lot of it comes down to how the edges are, are handled. Where you have a soft edge, you may have a hard edge. It makes a huge difference to how convincing something looks as, as form. Sounds suspicious, you'd like the kids are back. Oh, Laura, uh, the original photo was taken um, under natural light, um, which I generally, I will generally work under if I, if I possibly can. I much prefer it. Um, and I'm blessed with um, a studio with really nice big windows that face kind of northwest. So most of the day I have nice light. Um, but at the moment, at this point, I'm working from the photo uh, because I actually took this. I do still have the apple, um, but it's changed quite a bit. 
I took this photo a little while back. Um, actually for a workshop that I'm teaching at the moment and I liked it so much I decided to to do a version of it as a, like a small but more finished painting. When I'm teaching, usually I'm teaching like specific like principles. Um, this one was really about, the session we did last night for this one was really about, um, it's always about the form and the color, but it was particularly um, focused on expressive brush handling. which strangely isn't often taught, I don't think. I only just realized recently that uh, it's actually quite a useful thing to teach because it isn't often taught. I'm not going to do all the detail of these little creases as long as I get the the kind of the impression of the light I'll be I'll be happy. I tend not to, I leave quite a bit of texture. I tend, I don't want to smooth it all out. I will blend a little bit, but I don't want to smooth it to the, to the point where there's no, you can't see any texture on the apple. Um, I just feel like, I'm, I'm, I want that bit of life in there, you know. Hey, yeah, this is an apple, Alex, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Javi. Um, I'm thinking about this, this leaf. I want this orange, one of those orange leaves in there, leaves in there, but I can't quite decide where it should go. Or maybe there's going to be two. You know, I'm going to obviously depart from the photo a little bit at this point. Usually I would kind of, I would prefer to have something like this sort of resolved earlier. I'm still going to need to do some blending around here, but I'm going to have to wait, I think, until that's dry before I can. That was a bad move. Ah. Is that this shadow should come smoothly and come out into nothing. I lost it a bit there. The problem is this, just this particular area here is I'm lifting the paint, which means it's, I shouldn't really be painting over that bit. It's fine to paint over dry and it's fine to paint into wet but painting into tacky is just um tacky paint is just um an accident waiting to happen and this is what's starting to happen there it's losing the smoothness so i'm going to leave that bit and finish it a bit later i think bit of discretion required there Thank you, Ian. Um, 
So the, the, I put those little red leaves. The, the red leaves actually come from a tree in our garden. And um, I put them in because, you know, the leaves are green and the apple is green yellow. And I just felt like it needed something to lift it a little bit. And um, they fit nicely in the bigger photo, but now I've I've kind of squashed this one down. I'm trying to think about where they might go nicely. The thing is, there's a bit of a movement coming down here where this I need to finish it, but the stem comes down, you know. And then there's a movement this way as well. So I'm, I think this is probably a good place for a leaf, but I don't want it hanging off the edge. But equally, I don't want it uncomfortably squeezed in, so I'm going to try and um, just have a think about where I might be able to put that in. Is that dry there? Yeah, that's good, so I can put a little bit of oil on. Just so I'm not painting into over dry paint. And I can, so this is like the shadow. So that basically, I always think in shadow to light. Always think in those terms. So if I just move this leaf a little bit back this way. See, it really feels like it needs just that bit of color there. And it comes out into the light. if I make it a little bit smaller. Hopefully without losing the form. Hello, Daniel, nice to see you. Need a magic cast shadow in there so that it's sitting nicely. Too dark. Yeah, I like that because it kind of follows this down and then this this edge of it uh, kind of mirrors this edge of the apple. I, I kind of like that. I like to have like little sort of bits repeated. Um, I need the foreground color to, to play with as well though so I can handle that edge. So some of this I'm trying to remember what it, when I mixed yesterday If I want, so I want this, this is, wants to be low chroma. This is raw umber and white. Bring it up to about the value that I want. Um, but on its own, I think it's a, it, it wants just a little bit more chroma than that. So I'm gonna put in, send a little bit of yellow oak and a little bit of this quinacridone rose to send it slightly orange. Again, it's like I'm just thinking about the colors in the painting mostly. Um, and if it was too green, I think it might be a little bit, you know, I mean, maybe it might look nice as a kind of greenish painting. But... Christopher, that's so nice to say. Thank you, such a nice thing to say. Um, so these kind of foreground areas, I, I oh, that's too low chrome. I never want them to be, I want, always want, um, I want brush strokes there. 
No, actually, this has gone a bit too smooth. I wonder if I could. If I would destroy it if I scraped it back. Yeah, that's nice. Just wants a bit, a bit of. A... texture. So the reason I've mixed this colour is so I can handle the edge of this cast shadow here. So I need both colours up next to each other and then I can um, soften the edge, which I do by hatching it and then dragging across. Now it has a kind of a nice movement, I think. It's down here, I think, is the place to put it because it's, it follows this diagonal down. I'm going to do a little bit more on that leaf in a second. Ignore the rest of the leaves though, because um, I don't want to overcomplicate this area down here. Just want something down there too. To add add a bit of colour and also to just to finish that sweep. So I'm not bothered about it being like exactly the leaf that's there, but I want um, I want it to be believable. And obviously I'm using the colors as a cue. Let's let it go back into shadow more, I think. Um, it's nothing. And I do like those little blotches on that leaf, but I'm not going to put them in. I think it would be going a little bit too far. I don't think it needs any more than that, actually. Uh, and you can see, like for this one, there's a leaf there that I decided not to put in. I, I, I didn't, it would have ended up going right up to the edge and I, I just didn't, I felt like it just, it just detracted a little from this kind of movement down. I'm not going to put in the leaf on this side, I don't think it needs it, I think it's kind of quite nice like that, just with one leaf. What do you think everybody, would you put another leaf in, would you put, you know I could squeeze it in here, <laughs> would you put another leaf or would you leave it with the one? Now I have this leaf, I've got an excuse for some reflected light up into the shadow here. I 
because it would be reflecting orange. I probably shouldn't do this at this point. I should probably wait until that's completely dry, but just a little bit of reflected orange in there. Gives me an opportunity to add like something to the, uh, the apple too. Just really subtle. Perfect as it is, huh? Mm. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to add any more to it. I don't think I'm going to add any more leaves. That's the wrong... That was wrong. Can you see that what I did there? I just put in a little bit of like this color around here and it's it's wrong because it doesn't have enough chroma and it spoiled the back of the leaf. So I'm going to take it out. The problem with that, the value is all right. It just doesn't have any chroma and it really spoiled that area there. Didn't work. To connect with that leaf, it needs a bit more chroma like that. It just looked inconsistent. I think in a way. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, at some point I might resolve just a couple of little leaves, some of these leaves around here very loose and resolve a little bit of them here and there, but I'm not going to do that right now because this is one of those dangerous points where um, I could muck the painting up if I do too much because I'm, I'm, I've am I'm reached an, a point of indecision. Does that ever happen to you? So I'm, I'm like, well, you know, what I'm, I'm probably going to do now is have a cup of tea and a bit of a look and think about it and see. <laughs> see what I'm going to do. Not quite, not quite decided. You can see all my setup here, by the way. So here's the easel. You know, I have my palette down here. I've got lights either side. Um, there's a light there, which you can see, I think. And then there's another one this side. So the light falling on here is very even. And then I've got the laptop with the photo here. And I also have, if I want to check it, the apple itself. But it's getting a little bit, you can see it's a very different color now because it's it's a lot older, you know. Um, so it's gone more kind of um, orange, yellow. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it for now and have a little think about it um, and possibly do some more leaves or possibly leave it as it is undecided. And, but I do need to resolve this because this has got a bit untidy here, but I can't do that until that's completely dry now. So I'm going to have to leave it at least two or three days to be on the safe side before I can repaint this bit here because it doesn't look so good. It's not smooth. So I want fresh paint on there, um, painted into it a thin oil layer, but I can't do it now because the paint is too tacky. Um, but it's lost the smoothness here, you know, because the paint was a bit too tacky. <laughs> Take away the brush. Yeah, I, do, I am going to, I'm going to stop now. But I just think, you know, just a little bit, a little bit of fussing and around here, maybe on these little leaves. But this bit is really bothering me and it's always going to bother me that, you know, I do need to sort that out. But thanks very much for watching everybody anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you again soon. I'm still, like I said, I'm busy teaching at the moment. So I'm not sure if I'm going to manage to do a stream on, on Thursday as well. I'm finding at the moment, by the time I get to the back end of the week, I'm starting to feel a little bit um, drained. Um, but we'll see how we go. Maybe I will. So I might see you on Thursday. 
<laughs> Lisa, what made that work was the cast shadow. It's the cast shadow. <laughs> That's the bit that made it work. Okay, thanks very much everybody for watching and I'll see you again soon.